Hello there, everybody watching in the World Wide Web. I hope you guys are okay. I hope your day's going well. Things are getting a little bit more stressful over here that we're on day five of quarantine. Um, I want to make sure you guys are okay in your marriages and give you a few tips that have worked well for our family. Um, and I'll just launch right into them. Number one, one of the things that my husband and I thought about for years, and when we continue to have struggles at times that creep up, is usually around this recurring issue. And that is, we are opposites when it comes to planning and structure. So I have severe adult ADHD. I'm much more spontaneous. I resist structure. I resist planning. And so for me, I feel suffocated when someone tries to pin me down and say, hey, let's plan our day or let's plan what grocery we need or what are we going to make this week's menu plan? I start to feel kind of panicky inside and I get really stressed out. Whereas my husband, Shlomo, feels panicky when I resist all of his attempts to create some sort of structure and he's there with a pen and paper wanting to make some sort of list and it's like we butt heads. So one of the things that helped with was this was number one, oh, be aware of the dynamic because it's an opposite dynamic. It's like push and pulling and just kind of realizing that's what's going on for you in the background. Awareness is usually half the battle. So just like it's helped knowing that we have this dynamic. So when he does want to come and sit down with me, I can just take a deep breath and be like, okay, it's, you know, the meeting isn't going to go on forever. We're going to get this done. And he's really doing it to help me not to make things more difficult for me. But, you know, our brains are so wired to protect us. And so we do this fight or flight or freeze or submit kind of thing. Um, because chances are when we were kids, we had to do something, you know, that was felt unsafe. So we had to protect ourselves. So we went into this mode. So just, I have to take a deep breath and remind myself, okay, I'm not a child. I'm an adult. I can do this. And that awareness helps. Going along with that, it also helps when I ask my husband to give me a time limit on these conversations. So I'll say, you know, like, I really need to know this conversation isn't going to go on for hours and hours. He'll be like, I just need five minutes of your time. And having a boundary on the time that he's going to need to talk to me about creating the structure is very, very helpful to me. So that's kind of tips number one and two. Um, number three, fear of missing out. We are on social media all day now. There's all these live streams. There's all these educational activities our kids could do. The first day of quarantine, I was like, Mary Poppins, you know, we're going to have a schedule. We're going to have structure. I was like an event planner, planning all of the live streams and hookups they could watch. And I turned into a mess. The end of the day, I was exhausted and I was grouchy and it was not helpful. I decided I'm not doing that anymore the kids will do a minimal amount of their homework that is sent by their school. The rest of the day, they're riding bikes, they're playing, they're fighting, they're building, they're painting. I don't care as long as they're alive and safe and happy and they're getting along. I don't care what they actually do. Um, they're doing plenty of crafts, they're being creative and it will get done, but they have their whole lives ahead of them to learn and to have structure in a school format. This quarantine is not gonna go on forever. So you don't need to suddenly turn into Miss Supermom and Miss Homeschooling Mom, because those require certain skills and experience that I just don't have right now. So as long as everybody's fed, clean and happy, I don't care what they're doing. And I'm gonna give up on that fear of missing out or the social pressure, watching other people with what they're doing I'm giving up on that because it's not me and I got to let it go and I'm just letting it go. And I really encourage you to know what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are, and just let it go. Let, let whatever is not your strength go. Teachers are super powers. <laughs> um, that was number three and number four. So the thing about this quarantine is that it really reveals the state of your marriage. If your marriage was basically good, you're probably going to be fine. You know, with this quarantine, you'll have some good moments. You'll have some uncomfortable moments, but you'll relatively be fine. If your marriage wasn't in a good place already, this whole quarantine is going to amplify that and make it worse. So you want to use this time now to really learn how to get yourself good in a good space. And sometimes that takes a professional and that's okay because professionals are working online now. They're doing Zoom calls. Couples, um, I just read a, um, a thread from our colleagues. Couples are going into their car and having um, 
therapy sessions with their marriage counselor in their car using a hotspot, using mobile data to learn how to communicate and have crucial conversations together in the car. And if that's what you can do, that is a huge opportunity. Couples are shutting the door in their bedroom. Couples are doing these sessions after hours when the kids are in bed. Use this opportunity to be determined that this coronavirus is not going to get the better of you. It's not going to get the better of your relationship. You're going to use this to come out stronger. And you can definitely private message me. Use my website, themarriagerestorationproject.com. Talk to us about scheduling some online counseling work for the two of you so you can really get through this and come out on the other side better and stronger. Because I refuse to let this coronavirus take yet another thing from us, which is our marriage. People are joking about how there's going to be new babies or new divorces after the virus. And I prefer to hear about all the new babies that you end up having. So those are the four tips from me today, Rivka Slacken. And just hang in there. I'm here to help. And please, um, if you have any questions you'd like to see answered, don't hesitate to contact me and I'll answer them anonymously. Take care.